so at this point in time, um, what I would what I would do, what I should do, is to try to get everybody up to speed and how the universe is put together astronomically. And I need to start up another piece of software to demonstrate that. Okay, in this piece of software, I want to make sure that everyone is up to speed on how the universe works with this particular piece of software. This is um, a collection of 28,000 galaxies mapped um, within a 700 million light year cube. Now 28,000, given the fact that the universe, as we currently understand it to be, of 200 billion galaxies within a 13 billion galaxy age of the universe, 28,000 is pretty small. On the other hand, these neighboring 28,000 galaxies um, emit light in a way that's, that astronomy is able to actually grab the light and say very significant things about how close or far away those galaxies are. So every, every little dot in this image, as you're looking at these dots on the screen, are galaxies. These are not stars. And so here's, again, a semblance of our own Milky Way. Note that, note that this is a barred spiral. We have these, as the Book phrases it, two great streams of stellar coils wrapping around. And I'm able to take this image of the Milky Way and I'm able to turn it on its edge. So we're essentially taking the universe and doing a 3D manipulation of the entire universe. And as we look just below, if we were in the southern hemisphere, we could see this guy, which is the Large, Ma large Magellanic Cloud, and this guy, which is the Small Magellanic Cloud, and these are small satellites of the Milky Way. So right in our own neighborhood, we have a couple of major companions. In fact, what we can do is we can travel a little bit to another major neighbor, and we're going to go and find, because the Andromeda Galaxy is such a, a very important companion. Here's the Andromeda Galaxy, and it's very nearby. Andromeda is just right on our doorstep. And again, we can see on both sides of the whole thing. In fact, if I rotate around enough, we might be able to see the Milky Way behind it. Um, at any rate, let's go back home, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to zoom in. And the only stars that are plotted in this whole image of the universe are right here ahead of us, and we're zooming in on this group of stars, and we are heading towards the Earth. If you look at the very bottom of the image, you can see that we are here about a thousand light years from home, and as we continue to zoom in, the sun begins to appear, and we're only 60 light years from the Earth. And as we get closer, whoops, it came in too far too fast. At this distance, which is about 140 astronomical units. Now, an astronomical unit is the distance from the Earth to the sun. If you extend that out 140 times, we begin to see Pluto's orbit approaching us. So we're going to move in to the solar system. And we're going to move in through the, the boundaries of each one of the orbits. And we're going to head toward the sun. And there's, oh, we're inside the sun. Anyway, OK, so <laughs> let's back out. And we'll head back out. And I would love to turn our planetary siblings on its side. We'll do that. Let's just do that quickly. So here you can see the orbits of all the planets laid out. In fact, you can see here how Neptune is within the orbit of Pluto. So let's again go home. We'll return home. And home is this gaze of the Milky Way. It's straight ahead of us. And we're going to go out. We're going to take a long distance view away from the Milky Way. And so the Milky Way is always going to remain at the center of everything here. And as we go farther and farther out, I want you to notice that the galaxies that are pictured here are not dots in a very homogeneous looking field. They are all grouped together because that's what galaxies do. And it's important for your understanding of how everything in the universe is put together is to realize the galaxies group together in small clusters and in large clusters. In fact, I can take this whole grouping and I can turn it on edge. See, I can, I can manipulate the entire 700 million light year cube. Let's go out to the entire border here. And the Tully collection at the top is this collection of 28,000 galaxies. So we're going to go out just a little bit farther here. And if you look at the bottom of the screen, 
we are 700 million light years away from the Milky Way galaxy. This image of all 28,000 galaxies mapped has something curious, anomalous about it, and that is that in the very middle of the entire image, there's a black area. And this is really, it's really important to get a handle on this because this region of blackness is black for a very simple reason. It has nothing to do with the fact that there's no galaxies because the reality is there must be tons of galaxies that we can't document that live in this space. The reason that we cannot say anything about those galaxies is because we're in the middle. And if we try to look to see those galaxies, we have to look through all the stars of the Milky Way on edge to see them. So in the night sky, when you look at the band of stars in the night sky, you have to look directly through the band of stars in the night sky to say anything about what lies along this path. So as a result of that, this mapping of the universe looks brain-like or it looks barbell-like. And that's all that we can say about this corner of the galaxy. And we're again embedded within the middle of the whole thing. Now one of the things I can do here is I can highlight various regions And what I want to show you here is there's a group of stars yellowed in the middle. And we're going to zoom in on them a little bit because this is our own neighborhood. This is our neighborhood of galaxies. And as I zoom in, the more I zoom in, the more you can see that this grouping of galaxies... Notice this grouping of galaxies. And I, I think this is really important because of phraseology in the Arantia book. Do you remember in the Arantia book it refers to Orbinton as having a watch-like shape? And the tendency is to associate that watch-like shape with a galaxy. So the early association, the old paradigm association of Orbinton with a galaxy is partially built on that term watch-like. Notice this shape. Look at this shape. This group of galaxies, this enormous group of galaxies, has its own watch-like shape. I think this is absolutely fabulous, actually. It's just <laughs> it's really fun how the uh, Urantwick phraseology, again, can fit both an old paradigm and a new paradigm. Um, but what I also want to show you here is, again, that this, this grouping of galaxies is grouped together, not just because it's near each other, but because these things are gravitationally bound together. And this gravitational binding and this gravitational motion together, this large-scale motion in the universe, was not documentable until the 1980s, even though the Arantia book seems to suggest a large-scale motion of universes, of galaxies, um, back in the 1930s. Um, we are going to look at one other structure. This is called the Great Wall of Galaxies. This enormous group of galaxies out here, in motion together, might represent something like what the Arantia book refers to as an outer space level. And I want you to notice that the Arantia book again uses a term of voids, that between so-called outer space level there are areas of voids. Now again, in the 1930s there was no concept whatsoever of the universe being so chaotic. The universe was known to have lots of galaxies, the universe was known to be in motion. Um, the universe was known to be expanding, but there was no concept of the lack of homogeneity that we now see in the universe. But this huge wall of galaxies is here, and in between clusters of galaxies are huge voids. There are monstrous voids that the universe is made up of between the threads that these collections of galaxies fall on. So that will give you a good idea. So on the, biggest, uh, on the bigger scales, like in, on the Great Wall scale, you might think of the Great Wall as a parallel structure to what the Urantia book might refer to as an outer space level. And as we hone in farther, we might be thinking of this group of galaxies as something like what a super universe might be made off of. And that should get you up to speed on how the universe is put together.